and amen. Amen. I thank the Lord for his faithfulness. I'm so thankful he has everything in control and under control, and uh, he's not worried. He's not losing sleep, and uh, he's definitely not caught off guard. Everything that you and I face has to go by God and through God, and uh, remember, he is the one that controls it all, and I praise the Lord for that. We ought to be victorious and live that way. We are victorious if you say, but we ought to live that way. I ought to claim it, praise God, and uh, I thank the Lord for that. I want you to open your Bibles back up, if you will, to Psalms chapter number 91. Psalms chapter number 91, and uh, as you turn there, I, uh, I want to be able to look at a few verses and be able to dive into the Word of God. For the sake of time, what I want to do is I want to read just the first few verses, and then we're going to skip to the last three verses. So we're going to start off in Psalms 91. We're going to read verses 1 through 3, and then we're going to read 14 through 16. The Bible says this, as the psalmist speaks, he says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. There's that word, pestilence. That word is said again in verse number 6. Verse number 10, it's said as a plague. So you see pestilence and pestilence. And then you see plague. You go to verse number 14, and the Bible says, as the Lord now speaks back to the psalmist, because he had set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him, and I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him, and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. We looked at this text the other day and really pulled out of seeing as the Holy Ghost led us to be able to know that God teaches us that no matter what we face and no matter what we go through, there's one thing that we know that's certain today, and it ain't changed, and that's that we can always trust in God. Now, whether you were here on Wednesday and we had looked through some things, listen, let the Holy Ghost speak to you new today. Be able to look at this and be able to understand that we can never exhaust the Word of God. May we be reminded today just as we were yesterday and may we remind ourselves tomorrow as we are today. God says, I never change. The Lord never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I say praise God to that. And I'm so thankful that the same God that was there for Abraham and, and Isaac and Moses and Noah and all those is the same God that you and I face. And no matter what we face today, we know that if God controlled it yesterday, that he can control it now. But when you look in this text, there's a few words that we've seen. It was the same word found in verse number 3 and verse number 6 and in verse number 10. We looked it up in the Hebrew. We think of a pestilence being something that spreads. And it brought to my attention by the Holy Ghost. And as I share it with you today, that you and I understand that the Hebrew word that we find here is not that God is trying to teach us that it spreads, but God is teaching us that He speaks. God is using this to be able to speak to us. And I want to say to you that God is still speaking to us. And God is revealing some things to us and letting us know exactly what we need to be able to know to be able to make it through this time. We have to understand today, just as always, that God, whether we like it or not, that God can use the external to be able to change our internal. That God can be able to touch our body to be able to change our soul. Do you understand? I guess to make it plain to you, we need to be able to understand the concept that God does things to be able to teach us stuff, not for the temporary, but also for the external, I mean, for the eternal. God is teaching us something for eternity. What matters is not right now. What matters is eternity. And whatever God must do, listen, to be able to shape us and mold us and teach us and change us, if it's to be more in the image of Christ, listen to me, it's worth it all. Make no apology. Have no hesitation. God knows exactly what he's doing. When you come to this text, we'd seen there are some promises that God gives. We were able to be able to see, and I remind you that as you look in this text, you're able to be able to see that God cares over and over and over seven times that you see trouble in these verses. Seven times you see trouble, but every single time you see that God cares for his people. And I want to remind you again today that God cares about you. 
when you come down to the middle of this chapter, you see that the words are being quoted again as the Lord Jesus Christ is being revealed. And what God is teaching us as He speaks to us is not only that God cares, but that Christ is still the answer. And aren't you thankful today that we don't have to look into our money and our bank account? We don't have to look at our church status. We don't have to look at all the government and everything that's going on. Thank God that Christ is the answer and it will never change. And I praise the Lord for that today to know that I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. But as we finished in this text, I remind you in verses 14 through 16, if you look at it, the seven times God says, I will, I will, I will, I will. And what God spoke to us was that God keeps His covenant. And that covenant is a promise that's kept. And you and I know that people change, life changes, and people say one thing and they'll change tomorrow. But don't you know that God never changes? And when God makes a promise to you that He'll never leave you nor forsake you, that He'll always be with you, that He is a friend that's sticking closer than a brother, do you know that God is true to His Word? So that brings me to a place in this text I'm not really interested in what God will do. We know what God will do. But the question that I want you and I to be able to see today is this. is not what God will do, but rather this. What will we do? When these tough times come, when things begin to happen, what will you do? What can we do? That might be the better question. What can we do when we face troubles and trials and confusion and chaos, when the world seems to be split and, and really just overwhelmed with so many different things? What can we do as a child of God? By the way, we should be different, amen and amen. We should be different, why? Because we know that we belong to the Lord Jesus Christ and because of that, that we have victory. And not only must we claim it, but we must live it. We must live it every single day to be victorious as a child of God. We're not living in doom and gloom and walking around pouting anymore. No, listen, God is still on the throne. He still answers prayer. He is the answer. And may we have a desire to be more Christ-like every single day. So what can we do when these times come? Well, I'll tell you what you don't need to do, and that's give up. A lot of people are giving up. They're throwing in the towel. A lot of people are walking away. A lot of people are saying it's too hard. And I want to say to you, don't ever get to the place where it gives up. God showed me a verse a few weeks ago. I was reading it. says that a living dog, a dog is better than a dead lion. And what that's saying is, listen, as long as you're living, you still have hope. As long as Jesus is still the answer, there's still hope. There's never a reason to throw in a towel, child of God. There's never a reason to stop. There's never a reason to turn back. There's never a reason to think that God is finished. No, listen, God is doing something every single day, and we must trust Him in everything that He leads us to and remember that whatever He leads us to, thank God He will lead us through. So what can we do during this time? The first thing that I would share with you would be found here in verse number 1, notice what the Bible says. The Bible says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The first thing that we can do today is every day we can listen, live in the presence of God. Now that seems to be simple, but I'm telling you during this time that we slow down, I wonder how many of us have realized that we might act like we're in the presence of God when we come to church, but what about when we leave church? Y'all help me now. I'm talking about understanding that the same God that sees us in those four walls is the same God that sees us in the four walls of our home. And we ought to live every day knowing that God sees us, that God is watching us. And the Bible says that he that dwelleth, that word dwell literally means not to visit. It means live as a child of God. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all the way, seven days a week, 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. We must live in the presence of God, and not only live like it, we all ought to live knowing that God is watching us. And I'm telling you, that, that is where we must stay. Wherever God leads us, we must follow. We must trust Him. He says in this text that He's my refuge. He says in verse number 9 that He's my refuge. And here's what that tells me. That even though sometimes we might not think that we can get to God, when we live in His presence, praise God, God can always get to us. Are you understanding me? There might be times where you can't see the Lord, but you rest assured, honey, God's always got His eyes on you. And every single day we can make our mind to live in the presence of the Lord. He says this word in verse number 1. He says, dwelleth. He says the word in verse number 9, the habitation. You know what that is? Those are permanent words. 
Those are permanent words. And as a child of God, we must permanently live in the presence of God. Now, I had to challenge you. Is everything you listen, walk, watch, speak, do, wear, dress, act, think, do we do it knowing that we're in the presence of God? Because I'm telling you right now, this is the time to draw closer to Him. This is the time to be able to listen to the voice of God and let Him speak to you and be able to know that God is in control and that He's got a purpose. And let us draw nigh to God because the Bible says that we draw nigh to God that He will draw nigh to us. And I'm telling you something, when your hard days come, you can know that God will answer your prayers because you pray with God every single day. See, when you live in the presence of God, there is no doubt that God answers prayers in the valley. There is no doubt that God answers prayer in the darkness. Why? Because when you pray every day, you know that God answers prayer on your hardest day. So not only can we live in the presence of God, but every day we can also, listen, we can trust the Lord. The Bible says in verse number 2, if you notice, he says, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. Notice these words, in Him will I trust. He said He's my God. That means He's personal. I'm glad that I got a personal God today. But He says I can trust Him. Listen, you can't trust everything. You can't even trust yourself. You say, well, I just got to follow my heart. Jeremiah 17, 9, the Bible says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Listen, don't trust your heart. You have to trust the Lord. That's what you must do. Trust the Lord. You can't trust in your finances. You can't trust in the environment. You can't trust in the government. You can't trust in people. You can't even trust in, in friends and family all the time. But there's one person I'd like to be able to tell you today that you can always trust them, and it is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he'd be able to tell us every single day, just as he does in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 3, to trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not to thy own understanding in all thy ways. That means leaning on God with everything. Give him everything you got. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. That means trust him with your home, trust him with your finances, trust him with your future, trust Him with your cheer, children, trust Him with your marriage, trust the Lord with everything today. May we make our mind up, I will trust the Lord. What do you do in these tough times, Brother Jason? I'll tell you what you do. You live in the presence of God, but you make your mind up, I will trust the Lord. Notice what he says there. If you go back, he says, I will live that shall abide. Verse number one, under the shadow of the Almighty. Now I know that you and I, when we think shadow, we think negative. We think of probably Psalms, chapter number 23, and where the Bible says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we think about negative stuff. But do you know that when you look in the Word of God and you study out that word shadow, that the main point that's always teaching is that it's really bringing you to a place of being into the presence of God. When the word shadow is used in the Word of God, the majority of the time it's talking about being near to God. Let me share a few verses with you. Isaiah chapter number 32, verse number 2, he says, In the shadow that he's there in a weary land. Amen. Thank God I got the Lord. He says in Song of Solomon, he says, In the shadow that he says, A tree that we can come and we can sit under. I'm glad that I can sit up under the Lord and I can trust him and know that everything's taken care of. The Bible says in Psalms chapter number 63, verse number 7, that I can rest in the shadow of his wings. Thank God for that this morning. He says in Isaiah chapter number 49, verse number 2, that in the shadow of his hand. What are you saying, Brother Jason? I'm not saying I'm just throwing something at you to make you feel good. I'm telling you that the Bible says that it's in the shadows that we can draw near to God. Why? Because it's in the shadow that we're reminded of the light. Amen and amen and amen. It's in the shadow that I'm reminded of the light. And when I'm in that shadow, who is the light? It is the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm glad that when we sit in that place, we know that the Lord is there, they, near. The Lord is close and the Lord is in control. So may we make our mind up every single day to trust the Lord. And not only let us say that we trust the Lord, but may we live that way. Live that way that every day we should trust the Lord. To where we could say, just like the psalmist, notice in verse number three, notice these words, confident words, surely he shall deliver thee. You see that? Surely he shall deliver thee. What are you saying, Brother Jason? When you trust the Lord, it's just like praying. When you pray on your heart on every day, you can trust God that he'll answer prayer on the hard days. When you trust the Lord every day, praise God, you can trust him on your hard days. You can stand and say, just like the psalmist, surely he will deliver me. Why? Because I walk with him every day and I stay in his presence and I know that I can trust the Lord. So what can you do in these times? You can trust the Lord. What can you do in these times? 
you can stay in his presence. Thirdly, I give to you this morning, you can also speak in faith. Notice what the Bible says. Verse number two, I will say, notice these words, of the Lord. Oh my. I will say of the Lord. In other words, he's speaking about the Lord. He's talking about the Lord. He's talking about the goodness of God. His speech is not based upon a pandemic. His speech is not based upon how he feels. His speech and what he's talking about is not what he thinks. Are you hearing me, church? His speech is about the Lord. Out of the abundance of out of the uh, mouth is the abundance of the heart is spoken. Listen, whatever you speak is what comes out of your heart. And when you trust God every single day and you speak in faith every single day, it'll be heard from other people. Can I encourage you today? Testify. Testify. Find somebody. Tell them about what God's done in your life. Tell them about the day that He saved you, that He changed you. Just get talking about the Lord. Listen, it's hard to be down and discouraged and live that way when you keep bragging on Jesus. Somebody say amen right there. I mean, come to a place to where you just testify. When's the last time you've done that? When's the last time that you just called a brother or sister in Christ? So can I tell you what God's done for me? Can I tell you how God's answered prayer? Can I tell you how God has made himself real to me? Every morning, I'm glad that I'm glad that I get up and I'm glad I don't have to come to church and meet with the Lord. I'm glad I can go right there in my office and I can get down there and my family knows that every day that I can meet with the Lord and I can go back and I can talk to people and I can testify. Let me tell you what the Lord showed me today. Let me tell you what the Lord showed me. And I'm going to tell you something. I start my day off better. I've not always been that way, but I start my day off better because I can testify. Because I allow the Bible to speak to me. I allow it to say something to me. And I'm here to tell you today that when you get your eyes set on the Lord and you begin to speak about the goodness of God, not even the goodness of God, just talk about the Lord. Just talk about who He is. Just talk about what He's done. Just talk about what He's shown you. Just talk about who He's been. Listen, testify about the Lord. You say, what can I do in this time? I feel like I'm helpless. I feel like I'm useless. I feel like I can't impact somebody's life. Some of you are used to leading and you feel like you, you have no influence no more and it's just eating at you because you want to invest. You want to speak life into somebody. Listen to me. Pick up the phone and call a brother or sister in Christ. Call one of these parents and say, hey, can I talk to your kid? You might be a, a children's teacher. You might be a teen a leader. You might be a, a college and career. Listen, we shouldn't just love them and have a title. We should invest in them. And tell them this is what the Lord's done for me. That God is stirring me up. That God is changing me. And no matter what the circumstances seem like. And no matter how hard it is. And how difficult it may be. And the decisions that you and I have to make. And the pressure that this world is putting on you. Listen, God is still on the phone. And God is still at your prayer. And yes, there's going to be tough times. But may we speak in faith and know that listen, He's bigger than me. He's bigger than my knowledge. He's bigger than my, my wisdom. <laughs> hey. God is so much bigger. And during these times, let us be a people that speak in faith because we know that God is real. We know that God is real. Why? Listen, let me stop for a minute. Because I talked to Him today. Do you hear me? And I talked to Him today. I talked to Him yesterday. Got up yesterday morning and done uh, some things. Come up here and met with a few men as we talked about some stuff. And, just like anything else, we face different things throughout the day and difficulties. We don't ever know what's going to happen. We don't ever know how the devil's going to try to trip you up. Well, you don't know that. Hey, but I'm telling you, it does something for your heart. It does something for your spirit when you get up to the first person you talk to today. It ain't social media, and it's not the news, and it's not the president, and it's not updates, it's not even your family, but it's the Lord. And you look unto heaven. And you say, as the psalmist said in Psalms 120, I lift my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. In other words, as I look around, I know where my help comes from. I might stagger and I might stumble and I might get weak in the knees. But listen, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Can I encourage you today to speak in faith? Speak in faith. Testify. Tell somebody. You say, I feel weak, Brother Jason. I'm not meddling. Listen, I'm preaching to you. I want you to stop and say, don't try to figure it out. 
Don't try to change it. Don't try to change them. Just call somebody. Start talking about Jesus, man. It'll settle your soul. It'll settle your mind. It'll settle your heart before you know it, man. You'll be excited. You'll be pumped up. You'll be so pumped up. You want to want it. Run out and tell somebody about it because God has revived you and stirred you. But that only comes by talking about the Lord. As I go to my fourth thing this morning, I say this to you. Not only can you speak in faith, not only do you put trust in Him every day, and not only do you stay in His presence every day, but fourthly, I'd say to you, we can love Him every day. Love the Lord. Oh, love the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him. And He's, listen, I mean, trust the Lord with all thy heart and all thy ways acknowledge Him. And he shall direct the past. But love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind, and all thy strength. This is the first commandment. That's what the Lord tells us to do. And I'm telling you, we ought to put the Lord first in everything in our life. You say, well, I, I feel like I love him. I mean, I love him. He knows I love him. Can I tell you something? Love ain't a feeling. You know that. It's an action. It's an action. And it don't matter what your issues are. It don't matter what's going on. It don't matter the decisions that you have to make. You can make God number one, and that's what matters the most. And that's what matters to the Lord. That's what matters. He says in verse number 14, if you turn over there, notice, he said, because he had set his love upon me. That's the Lord speaking. He said, because he had set his love upon me. And I'm telling you, when God looks at you, and God listens to you and me, may not just hear certain things, may not just know about our problems and our complaints and everything, but let's spend time telling the Lord how much we love him. Let's spend time telling the Lord how grateful we are for all that he's done. And let's tell the Lord that we love him for all the things that he's done, how he's changed our life and love him for our family and love him for our church and love him that he sent his son to die on, our cross for, on the cross for our sins. May we choose to love the Lord every single day. And I believe, I believe during this time, some of you just as me, I need to be able to reset my love for God. You hear what I'm saying? We might go to church every single Sunday. We might go every Wednesday. Listen, we might try to serve the Lord, but this is a good time to slow down and walk outside. Look under the trees and just say, Lord, I love you. Watch the birds and tell the Lord I love you. You say, you crazy, brother Jason. No, I'm not crazy. I'm telling you, when you slow down, you begin to see God in things that you took for granted many times. And just tell the Lord how much you love Him. Just push the reset button. Say, Lord, I just want you to know that I love you. Not because I mostly feel that way. Not because you bless my bank account. Not because everything's good. It's not based upon my feeling, God. I want you to know that I love you because I choose to love you. And put God number one in your life. We ought to live like we love Him. We ought to speak like we love Him. We ought to carry ourselves like we love Him. We ought to dress like we love Him. We ought, to, we ought to hang around people like we love Him. I mean, listen, everything in our life ought to say, I love the Lord. Everything ought to say, I love the Lord. I want you to notice that word that's found there, and I'll move on. He said, because he hath, notice this word, set. That means it's a choice. You're going to have to choose to love the Lord. You're going to have to choose to make him number one in your life. You have to personally choose that. So not only in this tough time can you trust the Lord, can you love the Lord, can you speak in faith, can you stay in his presence, but what else can I do as God speaks to me during this time? The fifth thing I'd say to you would be this. We can use his name. Notice what he says there. He says, because he hath known my name, this name that we know that at one time, that we'll stand before him, that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's the name that I'm talking about. I talk about the name that's found in Acts chapter number 4, verse number 12. Neither is the salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. I'm talking about the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, to speak his name during this time. If you go back a little bit, I want you to notice in verse number 1, he says that he's the most high. Well, that name literally is El Elyon is what that is. It's the name of God, and it means that He is God, my strength. That's what it is. See, when you begin to use the name of the Lord, you begin to be reminded that God is your strength. In verse number 1, He says that He's the Almighty. That means He's El Shaddai. That's a, that's a known name for God. That word means that it's God who provides. That means that when you begin to speak His name, that you're reminded not only that God is your strength, but God, He provides. And you're talking about being encouraged. Listen to me, church. 
We ain't got to live defeated. We ain't got to hold our head down. We can speak the name of Jesus and feel the power of God. He goes down in verse number two. Notice the capitalization of the word Lord, L-O-R-D. That's Yahweh. That's the Lord Yahweh. In other words, he, he tells us this is the covenant God. This is the faithful God. Man, when you begin to speak the name of the Lord, you think about his faithfulness. You think about him providing. You think about his strength. You might be down and out, discouraged. You might be on the mountaintop. But praise God, it don't matter if you're in the mountaintop or down in the valley. You will praise the Lord because you know that God is faithful. Amen. Not only that, but notice that this is really what I enjoy. The Lord has really helped me a lot on this. Verse number 15, notice. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. And I will be with him in trouble. And I will deliver him and I will honor him. Every day. We can do all these things. We can love Him. We can speak His name. We can live in His presence. But can I tell you, every day we ought to pray. Did you notice the words? He shall call upon me and I will answer Him. Oh, listen. We ought to be people of prayer. Be able to pray to God. To be able to talk to God. When you look at this verse, it reminds me of what the Bible says in Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me and I will answer thee. And show thee great mighty things which thou knowest not. Listen. This is the Lord telling us that He can do great things in our life, but we got to pray. Listen, we need to pray every day. I'll never forget one of the things that I'd read in a book a number of years ago that captivated my mind and my heart. It said the greatest tragedy is not the prayers that go unanswered, it's the prayers that go unasked. Man, to this day, that still convinces me. Can you, can, can you remember that God is a big God? Why do we ask Him for such little things? Listen, the other day, and I'm not a political guy, I'm not trying to be political, but when you line it up with the Bible and you think about how people try to change and take away the rights that we have, that was a big deal, things that happened in this state the other day. Some people didn't believe it because they didn't pray big prayers. But aren't you glad that we serve a big God? That God can turn any government. Are you listening to me? God can turn a king's heart. God can turn my heart. God can turn your heart. We serve a big God. But listen, we must pray. And I ask you this question, do you pray the way you should? Are you praying? And it's slow time right now. Everybody's so eager to get back. Have you prayed more than you ever had? Had you read the Bible more than you ever had? Had you used this time wisely, let the Holy Ghost lead you? Don't let this time be in vain. Don't let it be useless. Listen, every day, every day we can get up and talk with the Lord. And lastly, and I'm done, it's not necessarily found in a verse. It's found in every bit of the, the chapter. The last thing every day, we can go back to the Word of God and we can trust the Word of God. What do you mean by that, Brother Jason? Well, this is a psalm. That means it's a song. They sang it. But what are they singing? They're singing the Word of God. And here's what I want to tell you. Every day, we can trust the Lord. Every day, we can love the Lord. Every day, we can pray. Every day, we can speak in faith. And we should. But every day, look up here. Look up here. Every day. We should be in the Word of God. Not just one day, every day. Every day. Studying the Bible, reading it out loud, letting it speak back to you. Slow down a little bit. And I was telling our men yesterday in the book of Psalms, a verse that we use that we repeat often. I, it might be chapter number nine, I believe, and I might be off it. The book of Psalms, I was reading it not long ago. And we use this a lot of times for atheists. It says, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And I remember reading that a while back. And I thought I might not be an atheist. But you know what? When you read that and you read all that Psalm, he's not just talking about people who don't believe in God. He's not talking just about, about people who profess there is a God. But he's also talking about people who practice as if there's no God. Do you know that you could be saved? And live like there is no God. Are you listening to me? I'm not meddling. I'm telling you. I'm talking about getting in the Bible and letting it speak to you like that. And you know what I said? I was convicted. I'm still convicted by it. I said, God, I'm saved. Listen, you've been good to me. Never, never, never let me get to a place to where I act as an atheist does or somebody else. Never, get, never let me get to a place where I respond to my own or do what I think or what I feel. Lord, let me live every single day. God, help me to live every single day knowing that you are God and you are all authority whatsoever. I'm telling you, 
take the word of God and let it speak to you. I'll close with this. In this text, it's obvious that we see that this is what God will do. I remind you that the Bible says in verse 14 through 16, seven times, God says, I will, I will, I will. And the question that I have to you today is not what will God do, but what will you and I do? What are we doing? I don't know how many days that we've been in this place. I, I don't know how many days that we've been, you know, in this so-called quarantine thing. I mean, all I mean, I don't know, you know, since I think May, March the 15th. It ain't about what God will do. What have you done? What have I done? There's a uh, there's a a book, a song that we never really sing. The title of this song is simply this. It says. In times like these, the word to this song simply says, this hymn says, in times like these, you need a savior. In times like these, you need an anchor. Be very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. It says, in times like these, you need the Bible. In times like these, oh, be not idle. Be very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. The last verse, it turns, and it talks about me. In times like these, I have a Savior. In times like these, I have an anchor. And listen, in times like these, friend, this is a time that not only do we know that God must do things in our life, but I want you to be reminded there are things that you and I must do. Do you know what's so ironic about this, this hymn? The lady who wrote it, her name, her name was Ruth Jones. Her husband was a preacher, and she was a lady that during the World War, World War II in 1943, there were so much negative things that were going on. There were so many problems that were going on, and she picked up the Pittsburgh paper, and she read that paper, and she began to read the paper, all the different names, all the different things that had happened, all the people that had died. Can you imagine living during that time? I mean, World War II, all the deaths that had happened, all the pain that people were facing, all the sorrow, all the negativity. And in the midst of all of that, this lady, this precious lady got down and she began to pen these words in times like these. And I say that to say this in closing. In times like these, what are you writing? What, what's the story of your life writing in times like these? Is this a time that you've grown closer to the Lord? Is this a time that you've chose to love the Lord more? Is this a time that you've renewed your love with the Lord? Is this a time that you've got your heart right and begin to live for God the way that you and I should? Is this a time that you've allowed the Lord by uh, just confessing your sins, by getting everything clean and saying, God, I want you to renew within me a, a, a right spirit. I want you to clean me up, Lord. Give me a new heart. Let me move forward begin to confess and live right and trust that God is still on the throne and God has a plan. When, when God looks back at this moment of your life, what will be written? May we make our minds up today, not just to take God at His word for what He will do, but understand to me, church, listen, understand, church, that it's not just about what God will do, but He's looking at us wondering what we will do. So as we close today, He'll play something just for a moment. Maybe this will be the invitation. Would you just stop for a second and think about it? Not just what all God has done, but think about what you've done. Think about how you've used this time. Think about how you've used the time that God has slowed the world down and slowed your family down. A lot of you have children. You've been able to have more time with your children. How have you used it? Have they seen Jesus in you? Have they seen you walk with the Lord? Have they seen the pressure, the pressures you faced? But in your life, they've seen it evident God is bigger than your pressures. Have they seen that you've trusted in this book? They've been watching you and know that my mom and my daddy, 
They might not have known what to do, but they knew who to get a hold of. You listen, I don't have all the answers. And my answers are not always right. But I'll tell you this, no matter what you and I face and no matter how long or how difficult things may be, there's one thing. And it's an answer that will always remain the same. And it is the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you trust him today? Would you trust him today? If you're here today, you don't know Jesus Christ as a personal savior. Maybe go watch this on live stream. You say, you don't know my life. You don't know what I'm facing. You don't know all these things. I don't know how I can do all that. Well, a lot of times we try to live the Christian life, but we're not really saved. If you don't know you're saved, you can't do it on your own. You can't, you can't muster up the trust. You can't muster up the faith, if you want to say it that way. You can't. See, you must be born again. What that means is you're going to have to trust that the Lord is not just somebody we talk about on Easter and Christmas. But you have to trust that the Lord is not just somebody that hung on the cross, but he did rise on the third day. And when he arose, he overcome hell, death, and the grave. And because of that, if we trust in him, he took upon the sins of all mankind, yours and mine and everybody else's. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And when Jesus died on the cross, he took the sins of all of mankind. When he rose... He proved that he could overcome hell, death, and the grave. And by that, we learned that there is eternal life. How do I have eternal life? How can I have this peace, Brother Jason? How can I know that I'll go to heaven and be able to live with God? And how can I know that my life will be meaningful and full of purpose? How do I know that it can change or turn around? You have to trust in the Lord and die to yourself and repent of your sin and let the Lord just completely take control of your life. And I promise you, based upon the authority of the Word of God, that if you'll do that, God will change your life. If you're a child of God today, and maybe you staggered and stumbled. We all have. We all have. And I encourage you today not to be idle. Not to be idle, but to be more effective. For you children's workers and you Sunday school teachers that are children teachers. For you teen teachers and you teen workers. And for you adult leaders and teachers and workers. Listen, this is not a time just to show up and say you've done something for your people. You ought to call them, invest in them, love them, speak, speak life into them. Let them know that you care. Do the very best that you can not to be idle and let them know that God still has a purpose for their life and God is still on the throne. And I promise you, by taking away all the pity party in your life that you don't know what God's doing and you start loving people, the Lord will stir you up. You want to know why? Because that's exactly who Jesus was. The Bible says that he not, did not come to be ministered to, but to minister he gave his life as a ransom for many. Jesus was about everyone else, never about himself. You want to be Christ-like? Make Jesus number one in your life. Let's pray. Our Father, I love you.